Horizon Forbidden West is here, and if you've started playing, then you know Aloy's new adventure brings some massive changes compared to Zero Dawn. The skill tree has been completely overhauled, the machine count has almost doubled with the total count coming in at 43, and there's a whole new crafting system for upgrading your gear. Speaking of gear, as a new player, the sheer number of new weapons, outfits, and possible upgrades for all of these can be a bit overwhelming. It's hard to know what you should be spending your limited resources on at the start of the game, especially since buying and upgrading gear now often requires rare machine components in addition to shards. It's cool that we now have 6 weapon slots, but there's a good reason for that because the weapon types are more varied and complicated now, so choosing your loadout for those slots can be a bit tricky. Well you're in luck, because I've taken the time to test out all the early game gear for you to determine the optimal loadout before leaving the dawn. That's right, every piece of gear we're going to cover in this video can be purchased before you even head out the gates of Baron Light and into the Forbidden West. So let's start gearing up Aloy with the ultimate early game loadout. Let's begin with the outfit. Aloy begins her journey into the Forbidden West wearing the Nora Anointed outfit, which appears to be a broken version of the coveted Shieldweaver armor from the first game. It was a little too much to hope that Gorilla would let us have the fully functional Shieldweaver armor right from the start. And sure enough, this broken version rolls us back to some pretty basic stats. Even after fully upgrading it, it only has minimal melee and ranged resistance, which are arguably the most important outfit stats, and it only gives us mild resistance to shock and acid elemental damage. As for its skill boost, which by the way virtually all outfits now have, it does have a couple of nice boosts for the concentration regen and potent medicine skills, so those are definitely useful, but I wouldn't say they make up for the outfit's other shortcomings. For your first upgrade, I would recommend you invest in the Azeram Explorer outfit as soon as you can. You can buy this outfit from the Chain Scrape Merchant once you progress through the main storyline to the point where the shops open up. The biggest reason to move on to this outfit is the massively increased melee resistance that it offers. Even without upgrading the Azeram Explorer at all, you'll be upgrading to 13 melee resistance over the Nora Anointed's fully upgraded 5. You'll also outclass the Nora Anointed's acid resistance with 16 compared to 12. At the fully upgraded level, your melee resistance will be boosted all the way to 23, and you'll match the Nora Anointed's 5 ranged resistance. You'll also gain a lot more acid resistance with this stat being increased all the way to 26, which can be particularly helpful when dealing with bristlebacks. Finally, you gain some nice skill boosts for your critical strike and power attack damage. Of course, you're going to lose the boosts to concentration and healing that the Nora Anointed gave you, but you can make up for that by investing in those skills through the skill tree, which, if you've watched my recommended skills videos, you know you should be investing in anyway. Also pro tip, you can make up for the lack of concentration boosts on the Azeram Explorer outfit a bit more by first upgrading the Nora Anointed to get the concentration plus weave that it gives you, and then use that weave on the Azeram Explorer. Okay, let's move on to weapons and we'll start with the most important one, your Hunter Bow. The Hunter Bow is Aloy's faster shooting all-arounder for dealing moderate damage with Hunter Arrows and, depending on the type of Hunter Bow, certain elemental damage with ammo like Acid Arrows. Now the default Hunter Bow gains the ability to shoot Acid Arrows in addition to regular Hunter Arrows pretty quickly, and it's also fairly cheap to upgrade it all the way to level 3, where it can deal 28 direct damage and an impressive 60 tear damage. That's good because you're going to be stuck with this Hunter Bow until you head out beyond Baron Light, so you'll want to focus on upgrading it as quickly as possible. Also, remember to mod it with a weapon coil once it's fully upgraded. I would recommend putting a tear damage mod on this bow since that's its best stat and tearing off machine components is important, both to obtain these parts to use for upgrades and as a combat strategy for dealing a lot of damage in the early game. Unfortunately, the hunter bow leaves a lot to be desired in terms of damage dealing potential. To compensate for this, you'll want to prioritize getting the triple notch skill in the hunter branch of the skill tree, which will allow you to shoot up to 3 arrows at once, increasing the damage output of the hunter bow significantly. However, before you get enough skill points to pick up Triple Notch, you're still going to want to be able to deal a good amount of damage, and that's where a Sharp Shot Bow comes in. In Chain Scrape, you can grab the basic Sharp Shot Bow. This class of bow is designed for long range precision and high damage output. Even at its base level, this bow can dish out 50 direct impact damage, which is almost double the 28 you get on a fully upgraded Hunter Bow. However, the Sharp Shot Bow does have much lower tear damage, with a max of 38 compared to the Hunter Bow's 60, so you'll want to use these bows in combination to tear off machine components and deal direct damage. Once you've got the Sharp Shot Bow fully upgraded, I'd recommend putting a damage mod on it to boost this stat further. Also, keep in mind that Sharp Shot Bows give you access to the very powerful Braced Shot skill once you've unlocked it in the Infiltrator branch of the skill tree. This is an important skill to prioritize as it lets you deal massive damage with even the low level Sharp Shot Bow. Next up, we're actually going to pick up a second Hunter Bow. Yes, I know that sounds a bit strange, but hear me out. In Zero Dawn, your Hunter Bow gave you access to fire arrows in addition to regular arrows, but things have been changed up a bit here in the Forbidden West. 
As we've discussed before, you'll unlock acid arrows on your default hunter bow pretty much as soon as you arrive in the dawn, but you'll never get access to fire arrows on this particular bow. However, fire arrows are still important for taking down machines with blaze canisters such as fire bristlebacks and fanghorns, so you'll want a weapon that gives you access to them. This weapon is going to be the aptly named Fire Hunter Bow, which is once again available from the Chain Scrape Hunter Merchant. In fact, this bow gives you access to both fire and acid arrows, so you can think of this as your first elemental damage dealing bow, similar to how war bows worked in Zero Dawn. Now of course, the acid arrows are a bit redundant since your regular hunter bow can already equip these, but the fire hunter bow actually deals slightly more direct acid damage, so I would recommend you use your regular hunter bow mainly for shooting hunter arrows and use this one for acid and fire arrows instead. A bit later on, this will become your only bow for acid arrows if you follow my recommendation and transition to the strong arm hunter bow just after leaving Baron Light. More on that special bow in my next gear video. Moving on with our loadout, we're definitely going to want a weapon that can deal frost damage. Fortunately, the game gives us a frost blast sling during the tutorial, and this will serve you well for quite a while. My only recommendation here is to hang on to it and upgrade it to its max level as soon as you can to maximize the frost damage effect. Also, you should of course be putting your best frost boost weapon coil on it until we transition to a different frost weapon in the future. So at this point, we've loaded up four of our six weapon slots with what I would consider the essential weapons. The last two slots are a little more like wild cards at this point, but I do have two weapons that I think fit best here. First, before you leave the Dawn, you should definitely make sure to pick up the prototype spike thrower by completing the Bigger Boom Errand, which you can pick up from the Azeram Tinkerer Sisters just outside Chain Scrape. The spike thrower is a totally new weapon class, and beyond being a lot of fun, this prototype version is basically the highest damage dealing weapon you can get in the early game. It will really come in handy as you begin to encounter some of the tougher machines beyond the gates of barren light, not to mention machines like bristlebacks that you run into while you're still in the dawn. Mod this with an explosive damage coil when you get one, and just keep in mind that the ammo for this weapon is pretty expensive to craft, so use those spikes sparingly. And finally, to round out my recommended early game loadout, we're going to pick up an explosive blast sling for the merchant in Baron Light. This sling will give you access to pretty strong blast bombs and a new elemental ammo type called Purge Water. As you'll find out as you head into the Forbidden West, like Acid, certain machines are weak to Purge Water in the same way that you're used to machines being weak to other elemental damage types like Fire and Freeze. This blast sling is the only early game weapon that will give you access to Purge Water, which is why I think it's important to have in your loadout. That being said, the explosive bombs are pretty handy too. Once you upgrade the sling, they'll be able to deal almost as much damage as the spike thrower, and bombs are a bit cheaper to craft than spikes. Go ahead and put an explosive damage or knockdown coil on the sling once you have it upgraded. Alright guys, that rounds out my recommended early game gear loadout for Horizon Forbidden West. Now of course, this isn't the end all be all of setups. For example, if you want to swap out the blast sling for something like a tripcaster or the new shredder gauntlet, by all means, experiment to find out what works best for you and your playstyle. It is a bit overwhelming to have all the new weapon and outfit options, but the great thing is, you can really customize your gear for the way you want to play. I'd actually love to hear what loadout you guys think is best for the early game, so leave me a comment about that down below. Now of course, this isn't anywhere near the endgame loadout for Aloy, and there's plenty of gear between now and then that we'll want to upgrade to. Plus, there's also some really nice special weapons only attainable through side content. For example, the Strongarm Hunter bow I mentioned before, which has the overdraw mechanic like the Banuke bows did in Zero Dawn. So, if you're like me and you want to optimize your gear at every step of the game, make sure to hit the secret red button down below so you can be sure you see my next gear video. And if you enjoyed this video, or if you learned something, hitting that like button really does help me out as I get this channel off the ground. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.